So good evening, my dear J2025 warriors who are preparing for the CBSE 2025 board examination. Welcome aboard. And as you all know that your exam is fast approaching and a couple of days are left. And what is the right strategy to prepare for the examination and especially for the last minute preparation? Irrespective of how well your preparation is, let me tell you the paper, the chances of being difficult are really high. And there is also a reason why I'm telling you this, because I am noticing a trend among many board examinations in the last couple of days that the paper that they are setting is of slightly higher quality. In fact, they are trying to go back to the pre-COVID levels. And it is not, not just the NTA, surprisingly. It is not just the NTA, which is changing its pattern, which is changing its approach, uh, the kind of questions that it is giving, but it is also changing uh, in the board level examinations. So, if it is a simple paper, great. But if it is a hard paper, which happened a couple of years back, students prepared derivations, etc. and went, and then suddenly they saw that it was more of the objective type, numerical questions were there a lot. And, uh, you know, students felt that their preparation went for a complete waste because they were preparing more theoretical derivation based uh, questions. But, you know, CBSC asked completely different thing. So, you would have seen in the news also, many students came out crying saying the paper was difficult. But actually, the nature of the questions was way different than what students were expecting. That's why it feels difficult. Otherwise, the paper is not going to be difficult. All right. So, let's get to the point. Hi, Akshara. I'm so glad your friend got 96 percentile. I'm so glad. And Wanakam Anand, welcome everyone to this particular channel and we are going to conduct amazing sessions for you for the CBSE board examination and let's hear the strategy. Well, my name is Captain Shreyas. I'm the physics master teacher and I have been training kids for more than 13 years. So here I am to guide you all to, uh, you know, excel in your physics board examination and we have been conducting sessions for the physics so you can see for the last many years on this channel specifically for boards. For J2 we have been doing but for boards our content is are like top notch and its quality level is maintained and you can check all those classes and we'll be conducting more classes in the days to come so quickly smash the like button and subscribe to the channel so that you do not miss any of the classes now since we know that the exam is on 21st feb and we don't have much time now i will divide the chapters you have 14 chapters we'll divide the chapters in the following categories easy scoring chapters versus conceptual based numerical based questions which can be asked are from these chapters you can see questions on modern physics once you understand the formula and the basic concept it is very straightforward electromagnetic waves sometimes students feel it is very theoretical but actually you know it is very scoring it is not a big chapter it is a small chapter atoms nuclei semiconductors semiconductor is theoretical but it is scoring it is very, very scoring. Okay. So, understand EM waves and semiconductors are little theoretical, but they can be very scoring. If you remember certain things, remember the processes, remember your own methodologies to, uh, let's say, for the uh, different uh, electromagnetic wave spectrums, what are the applications, how are they produced, where are they used, what's the wavelength, or for semiconductors, uh, what, what, can, what is PN junction, what is the biasing, forward reverse biasing, what is uh, you know, drift current, diffusion current, uh, leakage current, all these terms, if you remember, understand it, trust me, it is not at all a difficult thing to do, okay? So, these are easy scoring chapters. Many numericals will come from electrostatics, current electricity, magnetism, EMI and ray optics. Like, for example, finding the images, magnification, finding the magnetic field, finding the force, finding the flux change, finding the EMF induced, motional EMF, then, you know, current electricity resistors, your current distribution, electrostatic, finding the force, fields, potentials, works, etc. So, these kind of questions usually come from these chapters. There are few derivations. You can have a look at it, but don't expect many derivations may come. But if it comes, who knows? Next important thing, the correct approach is please go through the NCRT thoroughly. And that is why I have been taking these classes. I have put up all these videos on the channel. I'll be putting more videos tomorrow 
so that everybody has revised every single line. So guys, just imagine these lectures, if you watch it even at 2x, 4x speed, it's fine. You can uh, move forward wherever you want, but have covered every line of NCRT. Nobody will do this for you in English. I mean, even in Hindi, I think it's very rare to find such videos. So please go through these videos. This is just meant for you. Every single line by line, these are recorded videos. It is for you guys. So obviously, you know, when I have to make such quality content, it takes time to record all these videos and we have put it up for all of you. Okay. Tomorrow, more two videos will come. And how many of you have seen, how many of you have seen some of these videos already? Please let me know in the chat box. Yeah. So this is very important. This is where I come into play for your NCRT thoroughly. You have to use short notes. Now, either you have made those short notes or you have downloaded it from somewhere or you are using Vedantu app or you have subscribed to our crash course and you are using those short notes, whatever. But please don't sit and make new notes. Now is not the time. Don't even sit and make short notes. Now you don't have the time. If you have it already, please use that. Okay, if you have these flashcards or whatever, please use it. Some of you might have bought these kind of flashcards, right? For physics, chemistry, mathematics, you might have bought these kind of flashcards like short notes. So if you have, make use of it. Or if you have made your own notes, stick to that. Numericals practice a lot. Practice many questions, calculation based numerical questions, in text question, exercise questions, must do questions. Graphs, draw it 100 times. Draw all the graphs, every single graph means displacement graph ray optics, whatever image, object, distance graph, even if it is not there in NCRT, but it was asked in, maybe it is there in exemplar, or maybe it is there in the back exercise, or maybe it was there in the previous year paper. So practice every graph. Also diagrams, be it experimental diagrams, be it some setup, be it a phenomena, be it some spectrum, be it some table, by heart all these diagrams. I'm not saying you to buy hard values, but I'm asking you to buy hard diagrams and practice it. Don't just read it. You have to label it properly. Yes, labeling is very important. Last three, chapter-wise PYQs, please do it. If you can't do chapter-wise, at least do it as a paper set. Solve the last three papers as well as the model paper. Use exemplar if you are done with this. Exemplar has some higher grade questions. You know that. And it will take you to another notch. And that is very important because if the physics paper is tough, if you come out crying, then you might not be eligible for J. So make sure that you have to cross 75% because then if your percentage is lower in physics, then automatically the burden will come on chemistry, mathematics and other subjects. So be careful. What I want you to do tomorrow, atoms, semiconductor, say for example, you are. I'm just giving you a plan. You can change the order. Chumma, I have put some topics over here, but you can change the order. The reason why I put these topics is because they are more theoretical and scoring. Theoretical and scoring, that's the reason why I wanted you to get some marks in hand. Then electricity, magnetism, EMI, this is going to be a tough one because big, heavy chapters with lots of concepts, lots of numericals and lots of questions. So please go through it on 18, 19, preferably, okay, maximum 19. 19, please go again back to some other remaining modern physics chapters and ray optics as well as wave optics. Yes, ray optics and wave optics. I have not put wave optics here, but you can do wave optics also over here. Okay, so that is the plan till 19th Feb. Then 20th Feb, do a final revision. Give two mock tests if you can. Give a sample practice. Give a, go revise all the weak concepts. Fill up all the gaps. Do not leave anything. If you feel, oh no, this might not be asked, then please do it. If you think, oh no, I don't think it is important, please do it. Don't, don't assume. Just because it was not asked last four years does not mean it can't be asked this year. And that is what is happening right now across many, many boards. Many students are getting shocked. Your paper attempting strategy can be something like, if for one mark questions which are more like objective direct questions 15 20 minutes because you have to also settle down in the paper two marker questions around 25 minutes let's say three marker questions around 35 minutes let's say four marker questions again around 35 minutes five mark questions again 35 minutes you can do more or less up to you 
but this is a general guideline leave some time between everything your hand will be tired writing 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 so whenever you get tired go through the question paper read the questions from that particular section meanwhile your hand is relaxing don't uh, use the same hand which you are using for writing for turning the pages or doing other activities in the exam let your hand rest let it breathe if it is sweating make sure you are carrying some napkin or something or basically just let it let it get free in the air okay that is what your time management should be i want everyone to write theory points to the point don't hit around the bush don't write random gibberish things but if you want to expand the point that is okay okay that is fine but make sure all the points are covered and you are underlining it even for a two mark three mark question don't think shall i draw the diagram they have not asked even if they do not ask draw the diagram even if they do not ask write the formula even if they have not mentioned block the formula okay some chart you want to draw draw the chart if you think one graph is necessary example they ask what is wien's displacement law draw the graph okay just to my putting some random example but say for example they ask you what is photoelectric effect show one simple diagram of what is photoelectric effect always underline always block final answer should have proper proper uh, you know uh, uh, i would say highlighting okay with a box around it with correct units final answer should be with correct units yes units are important numerical questions like i said always start with what is given to you write the formula properly and then start substituting and if you want to do some rough calculations do it in pencil only and then block the final answer with proper units is this absolutely clear don't even think that is this asked is this even needed just write it if some definition is asked say for example define susceptibility or something like that or define permeability so write it with proper units also after the definition is over is that absolutely clear okay also whenever if at all derivations come derivations coming is a very very less chance but if it comes use a proper logical flow remember what was the starting point remember what is the final formula or the theorem you have to prove and remember the diagram these three things are more than enough to build a flow if you know where that derivation starts from and where you have to end and what's the diagram most of the things will come to you naturally if you have practiced the derivations once but do not waste too much time right now for the next 3 days practicing derivations just practice at least each derivation once that's more than enough okay like i have said please use diagrams and graphs wherever you can do not even hesitate and always use the cbse way of writing already your teachers in school or you might have seen some sample papers if you want me to share some sample paper i will definitely share it on the telegram channel so that you have an idea what is the proper way of writing for cbse exam now in the next few days which type of sessions do you want me to take please let me know in the comments of this particular video well i have already planned formula revision session and numerical sessions and a mock test with high weightage high priority most likely questions for all of you okay so already i have planned something like a revision or something like a, a mock test with most likely questions and also question sol solving theory questions practice those kind of sessions are already planned for all of you apart from this if you need anything please let me know in the comments and if you need more help well our crash course with board exam and j mains attempt is going on right now where our marathons for physics are going to start as well as after that you will have chemistry mathematics biology whichever subjects you have enrolled into well for j students it will be physics chemistry and mathematics all right so the 12 cbsc crash plus the j mains crash is for 1999 if you are going to write vit triple e it's for 2499 and with the books with the pyq books for j it's for 2999 all right the batch is starting today so that means you have still a chance the uh, sorry it's starting tomorrow the, you still have a chance for you to enroll in the crash and start from fresh for your board examination there will be full fledged marathons notes and other material and strategies which will be given to you during the board preparation all right so that's 
the important J plus the CBSE crash course for your final leg preparation, which will continue throughout the CBSE board exam. And as soon as the exam ends, your J preparation will begin with the 11th standard revision and then your final mock test and then with the J advance. And also if you have enrolled for VIT Tripoli, VIT Tripoli specific test. All right, my dear students. Yep. Do you want me to do PYQs? Definitely, I will be doing PYQs. And uh, you want me to take the classes on the channel? Definitely, I'll be taking it. But first of all, like this video. What are you guys even doing? First of all, smash the like button to this particular video. I want everyone to comment what kind of things are you looking for your CBSE preparation for the next three days. Please make use of the crash course apart from the YouTube content. YouTube content will be there but make use of the crash course don't even hesitate students pay 5000 rupees for a subject you know every month for board i am saying and you don't even have to pay 5000 rupees every month this is complete crash with j with board preparation for all the subjects so make the best use of it all right thank you so much have a great time i'll see you very soon all the best hasta la vista